What's good, YouTube, Facebook, and everybody else? Thank you guys for tuning in. I am Jeff Lightsey Jr. here with the Black Boss Channel, and I'm here today to talk about a documentary that is coming out by Netflix that covers the relationship between two of the greatest human beings to ever walk the face of the earth, and that is Muhammad Ali and Malcolm X. Netflix is putting out a documentary, and it posted a trailer recently, and this trailer does not have me excited at all about this documentary. Now, obviously, there's vintage clips and vintage video and vintage pictures and things like that that are to get you excited because, like I said, these are two of the greatest human beings to ever walk the face of the planet, and the way they were brought together was by one of the most powerful forces ever in the world, and that is the Nation of Islam right muhammad ali was lured into the nation of islam was attracted to the nation of islam mainly because not just the honorable minister elijah muhammad but also because of what was taking place by minister malcolm x so their relationship grew in muhammad ali became world champion he became a muslim he went from cassius clay to muhammad ali he was named by minister uh, Elijah Muhammad by the honorable Elijah Muhammad and their relationship for a three-year period was really really good like really really good and it's been portrayed over several different films whether it was Godfather of Harlem that talks about Bumpy Johnson it is also was portrayed in a fictional film put out by Amazon the one night in Miami film that did really really well for Amazon but here's the thing here's why I'm not excited about what's going to take place in this documentary and it's because you have two, like I said, I, I've said this once, I've said it a thousand times, two of the greatest men to ever walk the planet, two of the greatest human beings to ever walk the planet that were brought together by one thing. They were brought together because of their involvement in the nation of Islam. But there is a man who is alive, who was alive then and who was alive now and very active right now that is not featured in this documentary. And that is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Now, Louis Farrakhan was around when Malcolm was in the nation, was around when Ali was in the nation, was around through all of this, through their rise and through their falling apart, beef or whatever you want to call it, that eventually led them away from each other, both Malcolm and Ali. And Farrakhan was there. Farrakhan is currently the leader of the nation. And somehow, some way, he is still omitted from a documentary that's talking about his group, two of the best members ever in the history of the nation, is what this documentary is about. The leader of the nation is alive and alive and active well right now, and was alive and active and very well back then. And he actually watched it. He was actually a part of it. Here are images and pictures to show you that Farrakhan was around when this was taking place. And he's not mentioned he's not featured there's no way you can get an accurate depiction of what took place between ali and malcolm without mentioning farrakhan see this goes into and and there's no way now obviously this trailer is only two minutes right so it doesn't show everyone that's going to be featured in the doc i imagine right i imagine this is going to be between an hour and two hours long so probably right there in the middle an hour and a half and it's going to have a lot of people but listen to some of the people that I saw in just the trailer that makes that they had me baffled. I saw Al Sharpton. Now, Al Sharpton is a prominent figure in the black society, especially in civil rights. And a lot of people love Al Sharpton, but there's no reason why Al Sharpton should be featured in this film. I mean, if I'm just being honest, I also saw Cornell West. The great Cornel West. Cornel West is someone, once again, who has fought for civil rights, who was very uh, prolific and very you know, well-respected in the black community. He is someone who is an elder, who is an OG, who is someone who a lot of us look up to, and he's a great man. But you mean to tell me you're going to have Cornel West and Al Sharpton and the daughters of Malcolm X and Ali who were children? Well, you guys, you got to think, Malcolm died in the 60s. Right. So these women, the children of him, of his child and Ali's daughter, who were featured in the in the preview, they had they were children when Malcolm died. So that means they couldn't know much about the relationship. They are told from second and third and fourth parties. I mean, Malcolm died in 1965. So his children were very young. When he passed away. He died in 1965, so that means Ali's children were very young. Some of them weren't even born by the time Malcolm passed away. 
So they can't really give you firsthand recognition, firsthand acknowledgement of what took place or about the relationship between their fathers. They can only be told from other people, the other people that were around. Well, I can tell you or show you someone that was around and that knows both men, that knew both the men, whether their relationships were great with the men or not, he knew them. And that's, that's Louis Farrakhan. Now, here's the thing. This is brought to my attention by one of my buddies. I mentioned earlier about films or TV shows, recent films and TV shows that have done really well, that have mentioned or talked about the relationship between Ali and Malcolm X. One of those I mentioned was The Godfather of Harlem. In the TV show, The Godfather of Harlem, it never shows the disconnect between Malcolm and Ali. It shows, you know, Malcolm introducing Ali, talking to each other, being really cordial, and it kind of leaves it as that. It just talks about, you know, Ali's relationship with Mumby Johnson, fictional, of course, and Ali's relationship with Malcolm to a certain extent, then it leaves it alone. But one of the things in one of the films that does talk about the relationship between Malcolm and Ali and actually mentions Louis Farrakhan is the One Night in Miami film. Now, the One Night in Miami film did really well. It was a very successful film, and it, it was a but it was a fictional detail about Malcolm, Ali, Jim Brown, and Sam Cooke all hanging out in Miami the night that Ali won the Ch uh, World Heavyweight title, right? But one thing that that film did, besides be very successful, is that it took a shot at the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Why is that significant? Because we know the image that the media tries to portray of Louis Farrakhan. It tries to tell us that he's this bigot. They try to tell us that he's an anti-Semitic person. They try to tell us that, you know, he, stir, he's a, he stirs up hate and does all of this, you know, nonsense. And anytime you mention his name, your, your videos get demonetized. They get deleted. They do whatever. They do everything in their power to make him look like a bad man, to make him look like he is the spawn of Satan, to make it look like anybody that follows him or anybody that listens to him are bad people, right? And we all know that just simply isn't true. Anybody that has a brain and has ever listened to that man speak, he is one of the most powerful speakers to ever walk this planet. And see, that's the beauty behind people from the Nation of Islam. They try to make these people sound, you know, so bad. And I'm not a Muslim myself, but I really respect a lot of their figures, a lot of their men in the in the nation now, and a lot of their historical figures, whether it's Ali, Malcolm, uh, Farrakhan, and etc. Right. And so they try to make you seem like a bad person if you follow him, right? They're just this militant leader who doesn't do anything. He just hates Jews, hates Jews, hates Jews, right? But none of that is true. And, we, and it's been debunked a million times. I do not hate Jewish people. Not one that is with me has ever committed a crime against the Jewish people. Black people, white people, no matter what your color is. That's right. As long as you don't attack us, we don't bother you. But in the One Night in Miami, one thing that they did, they took a shot at Farrakhan. And they, they made it seem like Malcolm tried to get Farrakhan to follow him when Malcolm decided to leave the nation. And Farrakhan turned him down. So that was a subtle, uh, a subtle jab at Farrakhan. And so if you look at the trailer for this movie, the fact that they omit the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is just their way, Netflix's way, of doing what Amazon did. See, think about this. The One Night Miami movie was put out by Amazon. And so Hollywood is a copycat league, right? Like just how sports are. Sports are a copycat league where it's the NBA, NFL. If one thing works for you, I believe it can work for me. And so being black is cool right now. Like talking about black historic figures, talking black, acting black, supporting black owned businesses. That's like a trend. That's a fad. That's really, really cool and really, really in style right now. Right. Just like TikTok and Snapchat, they're, they're all in style. Being black is in style right now. So Netflix saw what took place with Amazon and saw the success that they had in that fictional story and saw the success they had in taking a shot at uh, the minister, Louis Farrakhan, and doing all that. And so they want to create their version. And so their version, instead, instead of taking a shot at him, we're just going to omit him even though he would have the best context to all of this, right? Just imagine, just think about this. I'm going to put it in sports terms because I'm a sports guy and I love sports, right? Imagine somebody doing a documentary 
on Michael Jordan and the Bulls. We just all saw The Last Dance. It's like the most popular documentary ever, right? The Last Dance. And they're talking about Michael Jordan. They're talking about the Bulls. And they're talking about what all took place during that time and everything. And you don't talk to Phil Jackson. You don't talk to Scottie Pippen. You got, okay, it's, it's, it's centered around Scottie Pippen and Michael Jordan. But you don't talk to Phil Jackson? I, Phil Jackson was there. He was a part of the team. He was the head coach. He was there. He, he ran the team. He was a part of the organization. He's one of the only people that are still alive that was there, there 60 years ago. And you don't talk to him? You, you leave him out? You just omit him? Why? Because you don't like him? That makes, do you think you're going to get a clear, concise version of what really took place without talking to him? Talking to people who can only hear about these stories, who could only know about these men from third and fourth and fifth parties, from secondhand stories? And think about this. And another thing, this, this movie, this documentary is based off a book called Blood Brothers. This, the documentary is called Blood Brothers, and it's based off a book the same title called Blood Brothers written by Randy Roberts and Johnny Smith. Well, take a look at Randy Roberts and Johnny Smith. No offense to them, but these are two white men. <laughs> two white men that have no connections, nothing to the nation. Two white men played on Netflix, which is a white man's platform. So we mean all of these white people <laughs> get to tell us the story about the relationship between Malcolm and Ali. And we're just, and we think we're not going to get a whitewashed version of what actually took place. We think we're going to get the full real story. Like, yeah, there's interviews. There's the daughters that get interviewed. There's Ali that gets interviewed. There's, I mean, not Ali, there's uh, Ali's brother that gets interviewed. Ali's daughter gets interviewed. Cornell West, Al Sharpton, Malcolm's daughter. But then there's like these journalists, right? Or these historians and stuff. And we think they are going, they're historians. So they, they can only tell us what they've learned from secondhand people and thirdhand people. But there was a man that was actually there that could actually tell us what he saw from his own, what he heard from the two brothers, what he saw with his own eyes. And we decide not to talk to him. And oh, by the way, he is the leader of the nation that both of these men were a part of. And we decide not to talk to them all because he's anti-Semitic. He's the big bad wolf. That is Minister Louis Farrakhan. No, nah, man. So if you ask me if I'm excited about this documentary, I'm going to watch it because I love anything that has to do with Malcolm X. Love anything that has to do with Ali. Me and Ali are from the same city, the Louisville, Kentucky. So, you know, I'm the big and one of his biggest fans. I have posters of both of these guys in my workspace. These are legends. These are icons. So, yes, I'm going to tune in. But to think that I'm going to believe everything that comes out of that, it just simply isn't true. It just simply isn't true. Because you remember the last time that Netflix put out something that had to deal with Malcolm X? It was the Who Killed Malcolm X. It, it all signs pointed that a member of the nation killed Malcolm. Well, that was recently debunked. It came out that the nation had nothing to do with the killing of Malcolm X. That the FBI actually had all the doings of the killing of Malcolm X. So that was the last thing that Netflix put out that had to deal with Malcolm. So you mean to tell me there isn't gonna be a lot of things in this new documentary that can't be debunked? I think so. Leave your thoughts in the chat. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Once again, I'm Jeff Lighty Jr. with the Black Balls channel. Thank you guys for tuning in and I'll see you next time. Peace.